Okay, so an accelerating charge produces electromagnetic radiation. Great. What does that kind of look like, right? Well, here we have a charge that is definitely not accelerating, right? Okay, it's not even moving. It's just sitting still. So it's definitely not accelerating. So what do you think these lines are? Well, we have a positive charge here, right? And they're all going radially outward. So this is the electric field, right? Now, as we know, if it accelerates, it should cause a change in the electric field, which will lead to a change in the magnetic field, which, which of course goes on and on forever, electromagnetic radiation, right? Let's look at it just in uh, linear motion, right? So there it is, it's just moving, it's not accelerating, it's electric field is kind of going out. But as you can see, there's no real changes in it, right? Is it moving? Yes, but it's not necessarily changing. Okay, let's stop our charge. Whoa, you see that? Okay, so what if we cause it to accelerate? What if we just make it go uh, up and down with some frequency? Actually, let's start out with zero frequency. Okay, I'm gonna make the frequency go a little bit higher. You might be seeing that. Okay, notice now, since it's accelerating, right? That electric field is changing, which of course is going to lead to a magnetic field. This is just kind of showing the electric part of the, the component, but now you can see how that electric field motion looks kind of like a wave, right? And so remember, one of the big predictions of Maxwell's equations was that there should be other kinds of electromagnetic radiation beyond just what we can see, beyond light. Because remember, where is this EMR coming from? It's coming from an accelerating charge. And well, we can make it a charge accelerate however we want, right? We can make it accelerate so it has a very, very long wavelength, a very low frequency. The frequency of the wave is just matching the frequency of the charge, right? You can see that. How could this wave have gotten here and this one have gotten here if not from the same frequency of the charge uh, oscillating up and down? As I increase the frequency, there's no problem with having a more frequent wave right? Up, down, up, down. Now gives me an up, down, up, down. Okay. As I increase the frequency, so we go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, right? You can see, aha, uh -huh, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down in the waves as well, right? We can go more and more and more and more and more and more, right? So that a higher frequency produces a higher, a higher frequency of oscillation produces a higher frequency of wave. So what does this have to do with different types of wave? Well, different types of waves have different frequencies. And so maybe there's stuff beyond the frequency of visible light, right? Circular we can do too, right? Whoa, like too much, <laughs> right? Circular is still an acceleration. See those waves, they're going in a different kind of direction there, right? So as long as it's accelerating, EMR will be produced because of that changing magnetic field. Sorry, because of that changing electric field, which produces a changing magnetic field, yada, 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 on and on and on. This is just showing the electric field, but as we know, there would be a magnetic field coming, uh, be perpendicular. So for us, since it's propagating this way and the electric field is changing within the plane of the page, then we know the magnetic field would be coming at us and going away from us and coming at us and going away from us. What are the different types of electromagnetic radiation? Well, you've heard of all of them. Well, you've heard of most of them, I'd say, probably. Okay, you might not have realized that, hey, they're the same thing as light. They're just light that is oscillating at a different frequency, okay? Or with a different period, you might say. Though usually with waves, we kind of think more about frequency than we do with period, than we do period. Yep, that's true. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared light, the visible light that you see, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma ray, guess what? They are all the same thing. They are all electromagnetic radiation. They just have a different wavelength, okay, or a different frequency. So here are kind of some comparisons, right? We start out the big, long ones. Those are radio waves. Then we have the microwaves are a little bit smaller wavelength. Infrared, smaller than that. Visible light, kind of in the middle. Ultraviolet gets a smaller wavelength still. X-ray, smaller wavelength. You can kind of get the uh, comparisons here, right? So radio waves are as big as buildings. Humans are about between radio and microwaves, right? Microwaves are starting to get 10 to the minus two meters. So that's about the centimeter range, right? Infrared, okay, needle point. So the point of a needle, that's 10 to the minus five meters, right? Visible light is starting to get on the size of pro protozoans, right? Those are tiny little microorganisms, right? Ultraviolet, we're now starting to get into the range of molecules. X-ray, the range of atoms. And then gamma rays, we're looking at the range of atomic nuclei, okay? This is what is called the electromagnetic spectrum okay the electromagnetic spectrum and so what's a spectrum well you probably mostly used to that word in the context of like the political spectrum right so 
you can have any position on a political spectrum. You, you can be hardcore left-wing progressive, you can be hardcore right-wing conservative, and you can be everything in between, right? Every single step along the spectrum is a possible position to have when we're talking about a political spectrum. Same goes for the electromagnetic spectrum, right? Every single value of these is possible. You can have all of those uh, wavelengths and you can have all of these kinds of electromagnetic radiation, right? It's just a continuous spectrum of wavelengths and frequencies. Okay, and you do folks need to actually know, okay, or roughly know, you need to know for sure the order, right? You need to know the biggest to the smallest to the smallest to the biggest wavelength. You kind of need to be able to say for sure that, okay, microwave has a longer wavelength than infrared. Roughly, you should know the approximate ranges for lambda and for frequency, for the wavelength and the frequency. Um, especially for visible light. Again, you're going to get a lot of practice with it. You'll probably start to kind of memorize it by accident. The big thing though, is you need to know that, for example, if you get something with a very, with a wavelength on the order of 10 to the negative 12, you need to know that that's definitely too small to be visible, right? You're probably thinking gamma. Okay. So roughly you need to know the ranges and the wavelength. Good thing is, good news is you don't need to memorize both wavelength and frequency because once you know one, you'll know how to work out the other uh, with the universal wave equation. Okay, so let's start out with the first ones, radio waves, okay? So, yeah, that's why they're called that, radio. That's what you tune your radio into, okay? And a few other things, Wi-Fi, for example, is a radio wave, okay? So it's about in this frequency, so, so about 10,000 to about 10 billion hertz, okay? That's, again, these are all kind of approximate ranges, because remember, this is a spectrum. So when do you decide when radio ends and microwave begins? It's kind of up to you, right? It's a spectrum, you put them on there. Some people even actually group radio and microwave together. Okay, so roughly where it ends is about that. Again, it's produced by accelerating charges because that's all EMR is produced by, right? A common method, how do we produce our radio waves uh, is to accelerate charges by changing current in a conductor, like an electric circuit or an antenna, right? Well, that makes sense. How do you pick up the radio with an antenna, right? How does your phone pick up Wi-Fi with an antenna that's built into it, okay? Now, again, a lot of these methods of production are gonna kind of be things we do, of course, you can produce a radio wave anyway. All you need is an accelerating charge with the right frequency. So looking out into space, there's no one accelerating. Well, it might be, but the most of the radio waves we pick up don't come from uh, an electric circuit. They come from just charges oscillating at the right frequency somewhere out there in space. So we have radio telescopes. We have telescopes that look in all of these uh, wavelength ranges. Okay, a microwave, unfortunate name kind of. The name comes from the fact that well, when we were first studying electromagnetic radiation, we kind of, we had the radio waves and then we found something a little bit smaller that we could use every day. That's the thing. Often these things are not necessarily named by scientists, but society kind of picks a name based on what we use it for, right? And the ones that we were really using at the time when we were starting to understand this stuff was radio waves and microwaves. Which one's smaller? The microwaves, right? So even though they're actually the second largest wavelength of all of them, so they're actually the second biggest wavelength size, uh, we call them the micro, which means small waves, because, well, they were smaller than the other one. They were smaller than radio waves. Okay, so they're quite big, but there's nothing really in the grand scheme of the electromagnetic spectrum. There's nothing micro about them. Okay, again, produced by accelerating charges, like all others. Common method, uh, accelerate charges within special tubes called magnetrons. Okay, so basically just a fancier version of a, a circuit. There's a little more to it than that, but... You just got to make it accelerate a bit faster. If you want to go from making radio to microwave, you've got to change that frequency of acceleration to be a bit faster. So microwaves are looking on the scale of about 10 centimeters to about uh, 0 0.1 millimeters, right? Okay, now infrared, we get the wavelength a little bit smaller. We get the frequency a little bit larger. So 10 to the 11 to 10 to the 14 hertz. Now we're looking at, you'll notice this one's a little more, uh, this one's a little more defined, right? We were doing... Okay, yeah, roughly that is where microwave ends and infrared starts. Why do you think this one is a little bit more clearly defined? Well, look at what's up next. Visible light, right? So we do kind of have a way of saying, yeah, that's pretty much where visible light begins though, right? Other ones are just kind of saying, yeah, sure, split it up there, right? This one, we are really kind of saying, well, we know what we can see. So we really can't see anything right, that has a wavelength larger than this. So from that range to that range, that's about infrared, okay? Infra means below, and red means red. See what I mean in a sec, okay? 
Uh, it's produced by accelerating charges like all others. A common source is low energy transitions. Okay, so transitions that don't release a lot of energy by valence electrons between energy levels in an atom. If that sounds crazy to you, we're gonna get there in later units, okay? But essentially, uh, electrons switching between energy levels will radiate away some electromagnetic radiation because what's an electron? A charge. What's it doing when it jumps from one energy level to another? Well, jumping is accelerating, okay? So uh, most infrared is that. Infrared is what we think of as heat radiations. So for an example, an infrared camera, sometimes called heat vision, right? When you put that on, those are picking up infrared uh, radiation coming from some object, converting it into visible light so that your eyes can see it, but that's what they're detecting. All right, the next one, the big one, this entire huge spectrum here, right? This is not to scale. Visible light is a tiny, tiny little sliver of it. And it's what everything you see when you look around, the reason you can see anything at all when you open your eyes, it's because electromagnetic radiation in these wavelengths is hitting your eyes, okay? Other ones are too, but your eyes can't process them. So this is why this one's a little bit more well-defined is because the frequency, we know what we can see. So if the frequency of the wavelengths get out of these ranges, right? So in other words, if the wavelength is larger than 7.0 times 10 to the negative seven meters, we start to not be able to see it, right? Some people can have, like the range is a little bit different for people depending on age, depending on a number of factors, right? But for the most part, most humans can see between 350 and 700 nanometer wavelength ranges. And so remember how I said infrared meant below red? Well, we'll notice below these frequencies, right? You're now into infrared. Guess what color this light is? Yep, it's red, right? So you see from red to blue. So essentially visible light goes like this. You have your longer wavelengths, red, which then becomes orange, which then becomes yellow, which then becomes green, which then becomes Roy G. Biv, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, okay? And then you have your indigos and violets. We usually kind of call blue the end. Um, often violet is in there, but essentially we just kind of simplify and say red to blue. I shouldn't be making the amplitude smaller. Sorry, that was just me trying to do it faster. And, okay, and so visible light goes from red to essentially we say red to blue, okay? Longer wavelengths, red, shorter wavelengths, blue, so infrared, and again, how do we make it? Accelerating charges. So why can't you see? Because somewhere charges are accelerating. And that led to a chain reaction to electromagnetic radiation hitting the back of your eye on your retina and sending a signal to your brain that you're looking at a screen, okay? So uh, a common source is slightly higher energy transitions, right? Slightly higher energy transitions, again, just an acceleration by valence electrons, a charge between energy levels in an atom. It's a common source of all the light you see, okay? Look at this next one, ultraviolet, right? Infrared, ultraviolet. Whoops, it got cut off onto the next page. Okay, but ultra, that means above. Violet means, you guessed it, violet, right? So Roy G. Biv. I'm gonna skip indigo, poor indigo, but really, who cares about indigo? Okay, Roy G. Biv. So ultraviolet means the frequencies are above those of violet light. So we have infrared, and then we have ultraviolet, right? Infrared, ultraviolet, or UV, ultraviolet rays, okay? So these are harmful UV rays. These come from the sun. The sun basically spits out all wavelengths of EMR. It actually peaks in the green visible light spectrum. So why do we see visible light? Well, well guess what? We evolved on a planet where the peak amount of radiation being spat out by the sun was right here. So our vision evolved to see right in the middle of that range, right in the green, right? Smack dab in the middle. That is, if you look at the sun's peak, output wavelength, it peaks as green light. Looks white to us because it's all of them put together, but it peaks in the green. So again, higher energy transitions, an acceleration by valence electrons, a charge, an accelerating charge between levels in an atom. You can see now we're getting into, uh, this is ultraviolet wavelengths, right? To the, now the lower range of the nanometers. Then we have our X-rays, okay, X-rays. Common method of producing them for us, again, these things all happen naturally out in space all the time with other stuff, okay? But a common method for us to produce them, how do we make our x-rays when you go to the dentist and you get a picture of your teeth taken? It's to rapidly accelerate 
okay? Usually by stopping, because remember, stopping is an acceleration, okay? Rapidly accelerate, obviously, we need to get, if we're gonna get these frequencies, we need a big acceleration by high energy free electrons, okay? So now we're gonna not let the electrons be in an atom, we're gonna free them, we're gonna shoot them really, really, really fast into some metal that's going to stop them, and then boom, you have a burst of X-ray radiation, because that was a big acceleration, okay? Gamma, the final ones, right? These, these are made famous by the Hulk. Gamma radiation, okay, is basically the highest energy electromagnetic radiation. Your textbook will talk about cosmic radiation. Uh, cosmic radiation is actually not a form of electromagnetic radiation. We thought it was, maybe, uh, and then it turned out it's not. It's high energy protons, high energy charged particles coming from space. It's not EMR, okay? It can produce EMR when it collides in our atmosphere. However, the cosmic rays themselves are not uh, electromagnetic radiation. So gamma is the highest energy uh, frequency, 10 to the 19 to 10 to 24. Again, it can go above that, right? We don't really see it very often, but there's nothing stopping it. This is just a um, spectrum, right? Wavelengths, 10 to the negative 11 to 10 to the negative 16. Again, it could go below that. We just don't really see that too often, okay? There is actually a lower limit, or at least on what we can meaningfully talk about with it, but that's going to require quantum mechanics, and we honestly won't really get there, okay? But again, gamma, the highest energy ones, the highest frequency ones, the smallest wavelength, right? So it's produced by accelerating charge like all others. Common source is the rearrangement, right? That's the acceleration of a nucleus. Well, what's in a nucleus? A bunch of charges, right? Protons from an unstable to a stable configuration. Uh, when is this happening? You're probably saying, what? I've never heard about this. It happens in radioactive decay. So radiation sickness, you probably heard of, right? That's gamma radiation usually. X-rays can cause radiation sicknesses too. So can UV rays, but gamma rays can cause it very quickly, right? Where do you hear about radiation sickness in a big context? Well, things like Chernobyl, right? Things like Fukushima, where there's something had gone wrong. Uh, people cut corners and were not safe. And as a result, there was nuclear, there was radioactive nuclear material basically out. And so in that radioactive decay, gamma radiation was being produced, which is high energy, not good for you. And here's a kind of nice animation going from the longest wavelength. Just realize here that the color doesn't mean anything except for the visible, right? They're just separating it. This is how the wavelength kind of changes. Although realistically, it's more dramatic than that. A microwave is a lot bigger compared to a gamma ray, for example. But the idea is there, right? As the wavelength gets shorter and shorter and shorter, you go from microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma rays, and they've left out radio altogether, okay? So just a note, because this is a common mistake. Remember, okay, we've talked about it, but remember, an acceleration going in a circle, or any charge, I guess. I doesn't know why it has to be an electron. A charge going in a circle at a constant speed is still accelerating, right? Acceleration doesn't say change in speed. It says change in velocity, right? So its direction is changing and therefore so is its velocity. Because of this, it will produce EMR and the type depends. So just a note to don't forget that circular motion is still accelerated motion. Okay, and so that wraps up topic two on the electromagnetic spectrum. And if you're looking for practice with this, just check the Google Classroom or the agenda for which questions from the 13.1 assignment go well with this topic.